second semester learners today we will take the unit unit 14 that is hypothesis now they are learners you see a hypothesis is a tentative supposition the validity of which need to be tested a hypothesis at its initial stage may be imagine idea or mere guess a hypothesis is based on accumulated previous knowledge a hypothesis is made in order to find out the correct explanation of a phenomenon through investigation when by verification the hypothesis is found to be true a theory is obtained now dear learners the word hypothesis is a compound of two words hypo and thesis and literally hypo means under or below and thesis means a reason theory or rational viewpoint accordingly hypothesis would mean a theory which is not fully reasoned in other words hypothesis is a theory entertained in order to study the facts and examine the validity of the theory dear learners mill defines hypothesis as follows a hypothesis is any supposition which we make either without actual evidence or an evidence avowedly insufficient in order to endeavor to deduce from its conclusions in accordance with facts which are known to be real under the idea that if the conclusions to which the hypothesis leads are known truths the hypothesis itself either must be or at least is likely to be true according to cohen and nagel a hypothesis directs our search for the order it is not essential for a hypothesis to be necessarily true in fact hypothesis is not a claim of truth but a claim for truth dear learners hypothesis is a bridge in the process of enquiry or search which begins with some felt difficulty or problem and ends without the resolution of the problem dear learners the purpose and function of a hypothesis hypothesis gives direction to the investigation because it indicates which specific data are to be collected besides this hypothesis guides the enquirer in identifying what procedures he should use in the study to gather data which are relevant to test the posited hypothesis to sum up hypothesis is the pivot of a study around which the investigation revolves giving meaningful direction to the investigation particularly with regard to what kind and how much of data is to be collected dear learners the function of hypothesis can be explained as follows you see the most prominent function of a hypothesis is to adequately explain all the facts connected with the hypothesis it enables us to direct inquiry along the right lines it suggests experiments and observation it helps to collect necessary evidence in order to discover the order of nature it leads to the discovery of laws it explains facts and laws and thus seeks to verify knowledge dear learners hypothesis determines the method of verification as well as the procedure of an for enquiry hypothesis limits the scope of enquiry to a manageable area because instead of random collection of data it enables us to search only for relevant facts therefore it leads to economy of time and money hypothesis leads to conclusion which is sometimes very significant for the advancement of knowledge the significance of an object or event can be determined by a hypothesis
there are learners you see the section that is a very very important section that is characteristics of a hypothesis now see there are learners first one a hypothesis should be clear statement of relationship between two or more variables it should strive to furnish an acceptable explanation of the variables or phenomena it should be stated in simple and understandable terms complex concepts used in the inquiry should be delineated in simple measurable terms dear learners a hypothesis should be consistent with existing facts and theories in other words it should correspond with existing knowledge it should be stated in a way that it can be tested for its being probably true or probably false so that conclusion can be drawn as empirical statements dear learners steps of hypothesis you see the truth of a hypothesis involves observation imaginative thinking and anticipation and deductive verification this can be explained as follows the first stage of hypothesis is observation of facts observation presents some facts before us to be explained we come in contact with the facts through observations as a result of this contact questions arise in our mind about the phenomena thus the facts call for some explanation the second stage is the formulation of supposition a supposition is made to explain the fact which calls for an imagination at this stage the material supplied by observation are not sufficient to explain accurately the fact to be explained yet we must make some supposition so that we can account for the fact presented they are learners the third stage is deduction in this stage certain conclusions are deduced from the supposition thus hypothesis involves deduction now we see the fourth stage the fourth stage is verification dear learners in this stage verification is made whether the deduced conclusion tally with actual facts or not if we find that the conclusions tally with facts the supposition is true or is at least likely to be true if it is proved to be true it becomes a law otherwise the supposition is not true and thus it is proved to be worthless and must be discarded in favor of another now they are learner c c the section kinds of hypothesis a hypothesis assumes three different forms according to the subject matter about which suppositions are made namely hypothesis concerning agent hypothesis concerning law and hypothesis concerning collocation now the learners you see the first one that is hypothesis concerning agent in some fact there yeah, are learners in some cases though the law of operation is known yet the particular agent who is to operate the known law is unknown in such cases a hypothesis is formed regarding an agent and this type of hypothesis is called hypothesis concerning agent for example finding out the cause of material favor or discovering the planet neptune etc are some of the examples of hypothesis concerning agent the planet neptune was discovered by adams a leverrier by a hypothesis of the above kind in 1846 now there are others you see hypothesis concerning law this hypothesis explains how an agent works to produce a particular effect or even in such type of hypothesis to the agent is known to us yet the law or plan according to which the agent x is unknown in such a case we frame a hypothesis concerning the law of operation or the way or the manner in which the agent x this type of hypothesis is called hypothesis concerning law now the learners you take an example Newton established the law of gravitation by a hypothesis of this kind here the agents namely the earth 
falling bodies on earth, the sun, the moon, and other planets were all known. But the way in which these agents acted was not known. Here, it was presumed that their motions might be due to their attraction to one another in a particular way. Such a hypothesis is called hypothesis concerning law. And finally, on the basis of such supposition, the law of gravitation was discovered. Now, dear learners, you see, hypothesis concerning collocation. So, collocation means, dear learners, an arrangement of circumstances. When a hypothesis is made relating to the circumstances necessary to produce a phenomenon, it is known as a hypothesis regarding collocation. Sometimes, it, in a given case, both the agents and the laws are known, but the collection is not known. It becomes necessary to form a hypothesis concerning the collocation. Hypothesis of this kind is called hypothesis concerning collocation. Now, dear learners, you take an example. The agents such as the earth, the sun, the moon, etc. were all known, but the collocation of their heavenly bodies was not known. An Egyptian astronomer, Ptolemy, about 127 AD, regarded the earth as the center of the universe and supposed that the sun, the moon, and the other planets revolve around the earth. However, this supposition was proved to be false by a Polish astronomer, that is Copernicus. So Copernicus framed a different hypothesis against Ptolemaic system regarding the collocation of the heavenly bodies, that the sun was the center of the solar system and all other planets revolved around the sun. So you see, dear learners, such a hypothesis is called hypothesis concerning collocation. On the basis of such supposition, it was discovered that the order of the solar system was maintained due to this type of collocation. Ultimately, the Copernican hypothesis was proved to be true and it was accepted worldwide. Now, dear learners, you see, According to another classification of hypothesis based on purposes, hypothesis is of three kinds. Alice Tabing, who is a modern logician, distinguishes hypotheses on the basis of their different purposes. Now you see, first one is explanatory, second one is descriptive, third one is analogical. Now dear learners, you see what is explanatory hypothesis. So this is the simplest kind of hypothesis. An explanatory hypothesis is formed in order to explain a phenomenon. These types of hypotheses account for the occurrence of a certain fact by the interpolation of facts. When this hypothesis explains the happening of a phenomenon, the interpolated facts are such that an observer can observe them under suitable circumstances. Here the facts which are supposed are of the same types. Such facts constitute the data of the problem. But in other type of explanatory hypothesis, the interpolated elements are non-observable relations between the occurrences to be connected. One well-known example of this type of explanatory hypothesis is the Newtonian hypothesis. So now, the learners, you take another one that is descriptive hypothesis. A descriptive hypothesis is generally formed to describe a geometrical representation of the movements of the heavenly bodies. It symbolizes the order connection of the facts. One such example of such a descriptive hypothesis is the rutherford bohr theory to form a mental fixture of the relations between the elements of an atom. So, dear learners, so another one that is analogical hypothesis. Analogical hypothesis may be developed from descriptive hypothesis. An analogical hypothesis is that kind of hypothesis where what is true of one set of phenomena may be true of another set because the two sets possess in common certain formal properties. For example, Maxwell recognized an analogy between certain problems in the theory of gravitational attraction and certain problems in 
electrostatics. Now you see the learners, both the gravitational formula and the formula of electrical attraction and the laws of the inverse squared do the nature of attraction in both the cases is different. However, there is a structural identity between these two sets of phenomena. By developing this analogical or structural hypothesis, Maxwell formulated his electromagnetic theory of light. So, dear learners, this is the first part of the unit hypothesis and the second part of the hypothesis of the unit will be discussed later on and it will come afterwards uh, in a next video.